Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey, you guys, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast. We're coming at you from Hunt Expo at the Ruger Marlin booth, and I'm with my good friend Dylan Dowson from On X Hunt. And uh, we're going to update all of you guys on some of the latest and greatest coming at you from On X this year. Um, some things that are features that have been, you know, using in the past that we all love or tried and true, and then, and then what's new as well. So, Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah. It's always always good. It seems like show season is when we get to catch up and, and once record a, a podcast <laughs> once a year. So, Well, last year, I don't know if we... Did we do one last year? Oh, we I did one at Sheep Show. show. Yeah, yep. okay. Yep. I couldn't remember if we connected there or not or what we ended up doing. But um, it always comes and goes so quickly. Yeah. And like you were at Sheep Show this year, and I saw you for like literally 30 seconds because we have a booth it's so busy yep and we were there uh, a couple days less this year so it was a pretty quick trip yeah in yeah. and out yeah yep. but you're here at hunt expo a little bit longer yep yep so we have a booth um inside of hunt and fool's booth yeah. so Just if you find hunt and fool's booth uh we're right inside it yeah so let's dive right into that like this is application season i mean yep. everybody is studying at home where to where to put in you know where where do we want to hunt how are our points weighing out and you guys have a great partnership with hunt and fool if you're an elite member yep. um that provides so many digital services the digital magazine resources maybe elaborate to everybody a little bit on you know when you are elite member how hunt and fool and uh top rut mm -hmm. um is going to help people uh, with their draw odds, knowing where to put in, planning, strategizing. Yeah, it's it's an exciting time of year. It's also a little bit uh, nerve wracking looking at schedules and it's like, if I do draw this tag, can I go on this hunt? And yeah. um, just depending on you know how much time you have and how many states you're looking at applying for. Um, but it's exciting. I always get really excited when I apply for every state. I'm like, it, this could be the year. This could this be the year. Could I'll, be the I'll year. draw that sheep tag this year. Um, I keep telling myself that, and so far it's like this, big old goose egg. <laughs> yeah, I got lucky when I was young. Um, I drew Montana's best mule deer tag when I was 13, and it's, you know, it's like a once-in-a-lifetime tag, and um, so I, I used up all my luck when I was Did you 13, get a 14. big deer, though? Uh, really nice deer, really yeah. nice deer. Not uh, not a great representation for that what area. The, yeah. I wish I had the tag now Yeah. and knew no, you know. We were Wait, from we're haven't. from Eastern Montana, so that was the first time ever hunting the mountains, yeah. um, and it was just completely new. Passed on a couple of really nice bucks. Um, ended up shooting a buck that we had passed up a couple times, but uh, yeah, it was super fun. But yeah, application season is uh, it's different now than what it used to be. Yeah, it's harder and harder to draw tags. Yeah, um, and especially we, as these states change their, especially like I live in Wyoming, mm -hmm. and they're changing their non-resident draw odds constantly. So and a much lot of this that's year. to balance harvest objections uh, with winter kills and, and everything going on right now. Yeah, predation. Yeah, we did a, actually did a, a whole webinar on non-resident elk hunting in Wyoming yeah. with Hunt and Fool, and uh, I love doing those with those guys because I learn a ton. Um, I've got, I think, six out points right now in Wyoming. Yeah. So you can draw general. Yep, so I could draw general. Um, it'll be interesting to see how things shake out with the regions this year and with the special tag, you know, jumping up to, what is yeah. it, $1,800 yeah, or something. Yeah, it's very expensive now. Um, which makes sense if you really look at it and the way that they explained it, which they're the experts, I'm not on this. Um, you know, there were some instances where people were drawing, had better draw odds on the regular than they did the special just yeah. because of how it was playing out. So. 
Um, I think it's good changes, but uh, it'll take a year or two to figure out the draw odds and what that looks like. But um, to answer your question, essentially all elite customers have everything they need for application season. So we have teamed up with Hunt and Fool, so uh, we'll provide digital membership to anybody with an elite membership, so no additional cost through Hunt and Fool. Um, we also have a new tool out called Hunt Research Tools. So think of Top Rut Draw Odds, mm -hmm. completely revamped. So we stripped it down. Um, we still have that up for anybody who wants to check that out this year. Um, but it's really, it's a lot more user-friendly tool, provides the same um, accurate draw odds and information, but just more detailed. Yeah. Uh, harvest trends, uh, unit trends, you know, was it a four-point unit three years ago and now it's an eight-point unit? Yeah. Was it an eight-point unit for, for some reason they allocated more tags, now it's a six-point unit? Um, so you can look at trends yeah. and, and so and on and so And figure out what the science is behind or the decision-making process yep. for these wildlife commissioners. Yep, and it all ties back into the map. I mean, obviously, Onyx, like, we are mapping. We That's started right. in mapping, um, but we're able to do some cool new things now with application season um, and draw odds. And so it all ties back into the map. Like, obviously, we've got our map integrated within that. Um, but it's uh, it's a cool new tool. We uh, We got it out. Um, about a month ago yeah, I and I'm excited to yeah I'm excited to see you know the improvements and and we love customer feedback like yeah. if anybody uses it and loves it hates it has recommendations get a hold of us we we feed off of that and we we really do listen to the customers on on what they need not just build things that we think they need yeah because um, I'm in a different spot than you probably mm -hmm. are and you're in a different spot than somebody in you know Kansas that wants to come on their first antelope yeah. hunt out west so yeah uh, there's there's a lot to it. Everybody's going to use the tool a little bit differently, just like our maps. But uh, it's it's exciting. Yeah, I uh, ne you know moving to Wyoming, I'm not as concerned about non-resident hunting anymore because I have so mm. many hunting opportunities in my home state. I'm very blessed that way. That's why we moved. But I mean, a lot. Of, Wyoming is a huge destination state, but so is Montana and so is Idaho. And when you're looking at all of these states, like for example, I have a ton of points in Montana for deer and elk, and now I'm just looking at it like, all right, well, what's the year that I want to execute, taking away from my Wyoming hunting season yep. to go to these other states? And is it worth just, hey, I love hunting Wyoming. Let's wait until I can draw one of these super premium units in Montana yep. or you know what, wherever X Y Z state is that you may have points on it. And these draw odds are going to help people make those decisions they are and then also working with and calling and and talking to the folks at hunt and fool like they've helped me build a whole strategy around this right yeah. um i've got two young kids i live in montana i can hunt year round almost yeah. like great hunting opportunities very similar to wyoming um, probably shouldn't tell too many people about that, but I don't think it's a secret anymore. No, so. I, I think for <laughs> residents, Wyoming ranks number one for hunting opportunity, followed by Montana and third third being Idaho. Yep, yep. Um, so I do agree. I mean, I can, I can hunt so many species, yeah. and I've got really good quality hunts in Montana. Yeah. Whether I'm archery elk hunting, rifle deer hunting, like there's just so much opportunity. So I'm like, I don't, I don't want to take too much time outside of that and not be able to hunt my own state effectively. But with that being said, I've, I have gotten a taste of hunting. Like I did Oregon blacktail this year for the yeah. first time. And, uh, you know, I've done uh, a few out of state hunts and I've gotten a taste and I do want to continue to do that. Yeah. We did Colorado mule deer last year. It was an amazing hunt. Like it was incredible and it was a one point unit. So building a strategy is really important of, mm -hmm. for me personally, especially with young kids, I want to do at least, I want to do one to two out-of-state hunts a year. Yeah. One for sure. So I have one to plan, one to look forward to. And so I look at my points and I'm like, okay, I've got six elk points in Wyoming. It didn't work out this year. So next year I'm probably going to cash those yeah. in, get a general. I'll have maybe a couple more points than I need to, but then it guarantees You'd me that I'm going the tag. to. So I'm fine spending, you know, yeah. burning two extra bonus points or preference points. Um, and Hunt and Fool will help you navigate as well because, mm -hmm. like in so many states, you're like, okay, yeah, I can draw. Like, for example, Wyoming. I can draw a general tag. However, now Wyoming just changed it to where elk, you can't hunt all 50, I think, two units that are in general. You have to be very unit specific. And so, you know, you'll have that extra ability to do that research and make those connections with Hunt and Fool to say, okay, you know, what unit do I want to put in for the general? Yep. Where do I want to hunt? Do I want to hunt in grizzly country? Do I want to be backpacking around, you know, big carnivores? And predators or do I want to stay into an area that doesn't have those you know yep. what are your objectives what are your goals yeah and those points are going to change um, you know the west side yeah. versus south and east it's going to be interesting in a year or two to 
to see kind of where those shake out as far mm -hmm. as how many points it's going to take to draw the West versus That's exactly the South. exactly right. Hey, you guys, if you're like me, you are totally dependent on OnX Hunt for nearly everything from hunting, navigating backcountry roads, even real estate. But being an elite member with Onyx has so many benefits that you guys are gonna wanna take advantage of if you're not already doing so. For example, you're gonna have access to all 50 states plus Canada with tons of valuable resource, landowner information, and you're also gonna get added benefits like draw odds with Top Rut that will help you with all of your application seasons and benefits through Hunting Fool Magazine. And to boot you guys, they've got tons of great specials through partners like Silencer Central, where if you're an OnX Elite member, you really benefit from those partnerships. So if you guys aren't a member, I encourage you go online to the OnX Hunt website, use code WILD20 at checkout, and you're gonna save 20%. You're gonna love being an OnX Hunt Elite member. Because there's so, going to be those hot spots that we don't know where yeah, they're going to be. Yeah, and it's it's constantly changing. Yeah. The, the second that you think you have it figured out, it changes like yeah. that. I mean, every year it changes. I mean, they could completely uproot everything and, and start from scratch and everybody's <laughs> points yeah. go to zero. Um, you know, it wouldn't wouldn't be very uh, – it would, it would upset some people, but, like, yeah. that is a possibility. Um, but, yeah, it's good to have a strategy. And, like, I know, for example, from Colorado Hunt last year, I went into Colorado being like, okay, I'll build points, and once I get 8, 10, 12 points, I'll go on this great mule deer hunt. Talking with them and some other folks, they're like, you know what? You can do that, and that's fine, but if you go that one year and it's a bad weather year or it's a drought or you're hunting country that needs snow pressure to push those bucks into, like, you might have a horrible experience. Yeah. And now you've got 12 points and you have, you know, 15 whatever points, and you have all these expectations. I need to find a... I want to find a 190 buck or whatever it is, whatever your expectations are for all that money and time that you've accumulated. You got a lot of pressure on yourself for that. And uh, so they're like, the, the folks that I talked to are like, go more often, go every other year. Yeah, don't, go hunt don't those zero point one point. so much. Yeah, go hunt those zero one point units. And I mean, I burned, I had three points and we applied for one point unit and got it. And uh, I shot my best buck on the last day of the hunt. It was amazing. I mean, yeah. I shot a buck that a lot of people on those 12 point units would love to shoot. Yeah. It's not, it might not happen every year, no. but if you go every two to three years and, and experience that, you're going to learn new areas. You're going to have fun on the hunt and you're going to have more opportunity for the weather to work out and for the hunt to work out. So I might shoot, you know, four or five nice deer for the time frame it would take me to draw that one tag yeah. where I have a bad experience. So mm -hmm. some States, um, I really kind of leaned into that where it's like I want to go on more hunts mm -hmm. not all of them are going to be great yeah you're going to have to grind it out it might you know you might be trying to find a deer in a couple of days um but then there's some other states where it's like I've got points I'm just going to kind of sit back because I don't have a lot of time um once I get enough points to do something cool then I'll I'll cash them in yeah no so that you guys I encourage you if you're not elite members uh, for Onyx Hunt, become an elite member and, and you can save 20%. Use code WILD20 at checkout. That's going to save you 20% on a new elite membership. And, um, you know, get online, do that. Let's talk about some, what, what do you guys have new and great coming this year? Yeah, so I mean, the, the newest thing we obviously already touched on about Hunt Research Tools is, is like the application new things. So check that out if, if folks haven't. Um, feature wise, it, it's, we tried something new last year and it worked out really well where we, we, got all the features out prior to hunting season, mm -hmm. didn't release much during hunting season. Mm -hmm. So now we're, we're working on a lot of new cool things, most of which I can't really disclose yet. Darn um, it. I was I trying to give you guys the inside track <laughs> <laughs> and me. Yeah. Um, but uh, so compass mode is, is one that's really yeah. cool. There's going to be some cool new things coming with that. Um, so use case, a lot of folks still don't know it exists. So use case, you know, if you glass up a bedded buck um, across the canyon, you're going to go make a stock. Everybody knows you're, you know, you're so confident. You're like, yep, he's right there. I know exactly where he is. You take off, you get on that side of the mountain or draw or anything. Yeah. You've Everything lost looks different. Yeah, you lost visual for 30 minutes, whatever it is. You get over there and you're like, I don't know if I'm five feet from this buck yeah. or, you know, 500 yards. Everything is just different. Um, so compass mode allows folks to accurately and very quickly uh, mark known locations. So if you turn on compass mode, 
essentially as you're panning the phone around, it will change the, the direction of the map. And then um, you can actually put in a known known distance. Mm -hmm. So pull out your rangefinder. That buck is 684 yeah. yards. Then you type in 684 and drop that waypoint. So that waypoint, and I've used this a lot this year. Yeah, and that's how I did it in the past. I actually used mm -hmm. line tool. Yep. <clears throat> so what kind you guys guess and check? It, yeah. So what you guys have done is taken like kind of a backdoor method mm -hmm. of doing that and made it a lot more user friendly. Yep. A lot. Right, previously, I'd be like, oh, line tool out to here. This is where I think he is drop a pin mm -hmm. and then make the move. Yep, yeah, so we did that in Oregon and then uh, just got back from Texas and we shot two odd at it and did the same thing. So we ranged it and and we could kind of see him. So this was more just to, like, we, we had a good, pretty good visual on this one, but um, both of the waypoints that I dropped were within feet, like a couple feet of where they actually were. So it's, uh, it's really effective, it's really quick. It takes a second, and uh, especially if you're going to go on a stock or, yeah. you know, spring bears around the corner, how many times, you know, you, you put a shot on a bear and it runs into brush, then you get over there and it's like, well, was it was it here? Was it, you know, 50 yards up there? I yeah, don't know. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, so if you just take an extra second and use that tool, yeah. uh, you're going to have a waypoint to go off of, and it's going to be pretty A lot easier close. on your recoveries and on your stocks. Yep, yep. Yeah. So that's a, a cool new one that I personally have used a, a lot this year. Yeah, so going into spring bear season, I mean, we're going to be, a lot of us will be running trail cameras really heavy, mm -hmm. and you guys implemented a whole new trail trail camera integration last year, which was super awesome. Um, elaborate on that a little bit for everybody. Yeah, so it is it is super, super cool. I haven't used it a ton personally. Um, you can add, it's similar, think of it like adding a waypoint, but you add a camera, and then that camera, all the camera's information, everything is there. You can actually manage your pictures and everything right within That's the That's if now. you're using cell cameras. Yes, yeah. correct, correct. So like in my state, I haven't used it a ton yep. either because Wyoming, we're not allowed to use cell cameras. So it yeah. <laughs> doesn't really help me a lot like in Wyoming. But if I'm hunting Missouri, you know, my outfitter mm -hmm. can go in um, and we can add that camera and then it'll send the information to that point in the, in the, in the, in the app. Yep, yep. So uh, lots of work to, to still be be happening this year on trail camera integration, but uh, it's a cool new tool. It's one of those things too. We, the cool thing about Onyx in its state today is we obviously started as a Western company. Yeah. We started in Montana and then we had Wyoming and we just expanded to, to the Western, Western states. And uh, the cool thing about the growth of the company is it's allowed us to, okay, we need a, a whitetail feature. We're not gonna pull resources from anything on the West or from anywhere else. We're gonna, we're gonna enrich hire the, enrich. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're gonna hire folks that are that are experts in that and build that. And so the team has really, really grown the last couple of years. Um, and that's one of the most exciting things that I've seen is again we're building a lot of cool new features mm -hmm. like for a white tail hunter or mm -hmm. for a upland bird hunter. Mm -hmm. But those are all new folks that are experts in their field coming in and working on that. And it's not pulling resources from yeah. You know, I'm I'm focused on Western big game. That's my passion. It's what I grew up doing. Um, I love all kinds of hunting, but that's my my passion. And uh, so yeah, we're able to build those cool new things like trail camera um, integration and and not take away from the cool things that we're doing in the West or in the South or mm -hmm. any anywhere. Yeah, and that like for me, so much of my whitetail hunts, especially early season, like uh, not this last fall, but the fall before, I drew Kansas and. You know, I had a buck that was really consistent moving through this spot and, you know, um, feeding and actually there's a little food plot he was feeding in very consistently. And, and, you know, I knew as soon as I had the perfect wind and I had the right conditions in one sit, I was able to harvest the buck, but I had to have that patience, right? Yep. Like, okay, I know he's in there. He's in there every day. This is his pattern. This is the time he's coming in roughly give or take when everything aligns and it's perfect. You know, I'm not this kind of person with whitetail specifically that I want to go in and just sit every day yep. because actually every day you sit, I feel like it's worse. Mm -hmm. Like your first sit is your best sit for deer, um, for whitetail in my opinion. And unless it's a super hot rut and anything can run through, but if you have a pattern deer, your, your first sit is is your really your money sit and you have less chance of bumping them less chance of them having winded you in the past or circled mm -hmm. or whatever and and so this application being in your in your maps can also tell you oh, like whoa i just picked up this deer and you can instantly look it's you know two miles away on another camera right or you know it, and compare that information and that data it's really really critical yeah yeah no it is and you know, I've whitetail hunted a little bit in Montana. Um, we get a deer tag, and it's either mule deer or whitetail, whatever, whatever you like. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's a completely different game. Yeah. You know, it's it's so different than uh, going out and not having a clue where any animal is, yeah. and you're trying to find one. Now you've keyed in on a target buck, and it's like, what's his pattern? Yeah. Where am I going to be most effective and, and not screw this opportunity yeah. up? So the other thing I was using a lot last year was in-dash capability, <laughs> yep. which um, I preface it in most of my videos is you have to make sure your app is up to date because the first time I plugged in my mm -hmm. phone into my truck, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Because the in-dash wasn't automatically kind of picking up. And so it is really important if you guys want to use in-dash capability that you update your app and that it is the most update version. And then it's that simple. Like you literally plug in your phone to your dash and you open the Onyx Hunt app and it, it will display on your dash in your vehicle. Yeah, it, I use that one a ton. So it is, um, it's iOS only right now. We're yes. working on Android that will be coming out here soon. Um, <clears throat> another cool new feature that we have tied into it that works really well, it kind of goes hand in hand with InDash, is our Route Builder tool. Mm -hmm. So with Route Builder, you can tap anywhere on the map, whether it be like your current location. So if you're sitting in a spot and you're like, here's where I want to get up to the glass tonight, or here's where I want to go camp, set up camp, whatever. So you tap your location on the map, tap the other spot that you want to go to, and we will automatically build you a route whether it be two track road or dirt dirt road think of it like kind of like a google maps but yeah. off, off off road for what we like to do right um so that that's a, a really really cool new feature i've used it a, a lot just for hey i kind of want to glass up here what's the most effective way to to get up there so mm -hmm. you'll just drop that and then you plug in your phone to your your in dash and boom it's right there yeah you can just follow that so you're no longer especially if you're driving solo and don't have somebody to to navigate looking at the yeah. app um, you can just glance down and, and know if you have a right or left turn or go straight. Um, so many times before that, you know, you'd pull over on the side of the road and pull out your phone and be like, okay, yeah. no, I did need to take a right turn half a mile back there. Shoot. And then you're turning race, around with a trailer yeah. or something. Yeah. It's not Ra cool. racing the sunset and trying to, yeah. yeah. So that, that's a cool new feature. The other thing I like about it is just like, you know, where we live, there's so much checkerboarded public land, right? Mm -hmm. So you have private checkered with public and it's so scattered. So you can drive a country road and if you see something interesting, you know, like we use it a lot for turkey scouting, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, hey, there's turkeys over here. Is that public? Or if the maybe the habitat, like specifically going into turkey season, if the habitat's really good on the private side, but there's a stretch of public across the road, is there an opportunity where we can set up, put some decoys out, get hidden and maybe call turkeys? Why did the turkey cross the road? <laughs> kind of like play that game. Um, we did we did that quite a bit last year, and so we were using that map in Dash, like actively driving. Uh, you know, like we we stalked one flock of turkeys, and they were on an 80 acre section of public that was surrounded by private, and um, like we were we caught them just as they were crossing the fence onto private. But I mean, like yeah. 10 minutes earlier, we would have had um, you know. So it's nice to be able to be driving and be like, whoa, there's turkeys you know, jump out, go try to set up and call them in. And yep. even if it's on a small piece, like an 80 acre tract. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I use it a ton for mule deer and antelope hunting out east too. Just, it's nice to know, okay, there's there's a section or two sections of state land on the right coming up yeah. right over this hill. Then you look extra hard. Yeah. Like it's not like you're not looking for deer that happening on private. Yeah. I love seeing big bucks on private. Yeah. Like I'm all for it. Um, especially if you can look and be like, hey, he's only an eighth a mile from public and we can access yeah but uh it, there's something about just glancing down and saying like hey there's some block management up here on the left uh with a sign-in box or there's a chunk of state on the right mm -hmm. that really oh, yeah. you you really kind of hone in on and and look extra hard yeah um so we've used that a ton or you know you see a herd of antelope and you just glance down and you're like nope private or yep public let's go yeah, we, we hunted, um, we, the last two years we've hunted a spot um, that is a small section of public that is surrounded by private. And, you know, it's almost, it's like 15 or 16 miles into where we hunt. And, it, I mean, you really have to watch property lines. Mm -hmm. And then there's no trails, yep. right? So terrain features and, um, you know, we're using the mapping software constantly like year one our trip in was really rough because we didn't necessarily pick the best routes we'd never been in there we kind of went blind so we had a route in but this last year you know we were able to really take the map apart hey we've been there that wasn't a great spot really look at the map a little closer and reroute that stuff and now we have permanent maps into these yep. places that are safe in and out and then you know if we're in a low light situation um, we can pull out our phone and, and check those maps and, and you know drop those and uh, 
trails and mm -hmm. you know follow like you know uh, place in hazard marks and trails yeah, that yeah. we've been in the past like hey don't Cliff. go this route use this lower route and you know it's helped us so much navigate some of that really rough terrain because you know when we have you know five or ten mules string together like and you get in a rough mm -hmm. spot it's not easy to yeah. turn around and so having that information and you know we'll literally be riding with our phone out okay stay yep. to the left of this draw because you forget year to year you know you mm -hmm. or you know you'll have a bad winter and you'll have stuff wash out so a place that might have been passable in the past is not passable now and then you can just mark that in your app so the next time you go through there you can really wash for you know trail washes here and um i mean we use it as a mapping tool more than almost anything yeah. but also that landowner information is still really valuable knowing if you're on blm if you're on national forest if you're on um you know if if you you know you're getting really dangerously close to private last year we hunted so much, you know, close to private still that, you know, we're ranging animals and we're dropping pins. Yep. <clears throat> Are they on public? Because mm -hmm. there's yeah. not always fences. We, right? we did that in Colorado last year. It was actually, it was foggy. And so the range finders weren't working. Yeah. Like it, I, I couldn't get a range on this buck. And uh, we could, when the fog would lift though, we could see. Train uh, association. Yeah, well, we could see a fence and we knew from the day prior that that was uh, the, the public private boundary. And so those, those deer were, we guess, about 50 yards into public. And so we pulled up the app and I'm like, okay, from my location to 50 yards, you know, I measured from the, the fence line 50 yards in and then from that location to my location. And it was like, I think it was like 475 or something. Yeah. So I was like, okay, like, I mean, I'm very, very confident in that range. Yeah. Um, if it is a shooter buck and we yeah. get an opportunity, if my range finder doesn't work, I am like, within five yards confident that yeah. that that's going to be accurate so yeah. uh there's a lot of a lot of cool use cases uh you you mentioned something about marking good or bad trails yeah. i always track myself like yeah even even in areas that i've been to before and you're like oh i just go down this ridge i don't need to track i've i've constantly found good and bad ways to to get yeah. in and out of areas by tracking and if you don't need the track at the end of the day you just don't save it delete yeah. it um but man i've been there before where you'll you'll be on the side of a mountain and it's dark and you have a headlamp and you're like, this is miserable. This is not a good spot. <clears throat> Come back in the daylight and like it's five easy. yards above you, there's yeah. an elk trail that you could like, you know, just jog yeah. down. So, uh, yeah, I've, I'm always tracking myself. And then if it's a bad track, like if it's not a good area, I'll save it as red. Yeah. Just so I can quickly look and be like, hey, I, I've been way. down there before and it's not very good. Um, and, but I saved a, a track, you know, 15 yards above it and it yeah. was an old elk trail that you could just side hill the entire mountain and it saves you a ton of time. Yeah, And you know, one thing that we're really consistent with marking also is water. Because mm -hmm. where we live, you know, water is such a scarcity. And so, um, you know, we would like to mark where there is active water, where the water could be, but it's dry. Mm -hmm. And you know, we use our Onyx like a diary. My husband literally puts a waypoint for every animal he has seen in the state of Wyoming. It is you in have his a lot maps. of waypoints. And I'm not joking. If you see his thing, it's ridiculous. Like, I'm not crazy like that. He'll If he sees a deer somewhere, he pins it. If he sees a turkey, he pins it. And that way he'll, he'll know where to go. Like, well, in the past, I saw turkeys over here. Oh, I forgot. Two years ago, I saw whatever. And, and he has it journaled. And it literally is a resource for him that he's using constantly. Um, I don't pin as much as him because to me it gets a little cluttered. Like I'll let him clutter his like to <laughs> to no end, and then I'll find the stuff that's important and I'll I'll, yeah. I'll keep that. You just uh, change the color. Yeah, I yeah. can do that too. Yeah. That, see, that's the key is you have to have so many markups and waypoints that yeah. if anybody ever did find your phone on the side of a road, they wouldn't know what it's. They for. wouldn't have any clue of what is important, yeah. like actually, because it just looks like a you know something vomited on your map with yeah. <laughs> thousands of waypoints that's how mine is yeah like i'm not afraid anymore to to zoom out and let somebody see my map because it's like yeah good there's luck. too much there you yeah. can't like you're not going to know where i yeah. actually hunt <laughs> no you you have to be a forensic uh analyst to be able to figure out what <laughs> yeah. you're doing on it yeah no and and that's you know that's the whole point of it is that we're able to be more successful and you know a lot of hunting is people it, it's a heritage, it's a legacy, and a lot of people go back to the same spots year after year because we mm -hmm. get to where we know these places. There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. 
We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. You know, in the past it was all cognitive. Like, oh, well, I remember grandpa used to take me to this tree and we'd sit here. Well, yeah, we do that now, but we do it with so much more precision because memory fades year to year. I mean, even, actively hunting one year and then skipping a year or two and yeah. going back to those same places everything feels a little different mm -hmm. seems a little different and so it's nice to have those those <clears throat> those maps we can refer back to and and you know recall that data with precision without question and some people make notes in there take photos mm -hmm. um, then there's so many capabilities within the app that you can do to make it you know your own user generated content however you want it you can share yeah. waypoints with friends um, all yeah. of that stuff. You the know. photos is definitely underutilized. Yes. Like taking a photo of a elk wallow. Yeah. I've got so many wallow waypoints. And you that, don't even remember what they are. Yeah. I'm like, I, I mean, obviously there was a wallow there at one point, but yeah. you know, you can look at the date, you can look at the notes, whatever. But if you just take a photo, it's and like, uh, it, it really, for me, it just triggers like, ah, like I remember standing there. I remember a bull bugling up over the drainage mm -hmm. and I found a wallow. Like it, it just really triggers um, like what I was doing, what I was thinking when mm -hmm. I did it. So adding photos is is uh, underutilized for sure. A lot of folks don't don't know they can even do that. And that's yeah. the thing with us. We, we do have a lot of features that can feel overwhelming. Um, it's really not hard to figure out no. as long as you're willing to take the time to play with it. Um, I always tell people you're not going to break it. No. Like, touch every button on there. Call customer service. You're not going to break it. Um, and, and be efficient with it before you get out there. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a, it's like anything else. It's a tool, you know, yeah. and, and you can choose to be really, really uh, proficient with it or you can use it for what you need it for. And that's totally fine. But I mean, I would say the vast majority of our customers use like 10% of the, the maps capabilities. Yeah. Yogi and I really, we want to, you know, as new residents, we, we're going to get out and get on the ground this year. You know, we've hunted. Um, this last year was our first archery season in Wyoming and we hunted very cautiously mm -hmm. um, because I didn't want to blow up bedding areas and so you know we had a lot of success great encounters I called in a lot of elk this fall um, but we want to go in you know preseason this year and get down and dirty in those places I don't dare go mm -hmm. uh, during hunting season for fear of, of kind of blowing elk out of the country and you know figure out where those hidden gems are where those little fi hidden feeding areas are where those little hidden aspen chunks are where there's water and um, you know preseason scouting if you guys you know get on the ground and then use these maps for you you can stay out of those areas if you want during actual hunting season and just know hey you know when we were in here scouting this this was the bedding area let's not get in there let's yeah. only let's only call these elk when they're on their feet going to feed or on their feet going to bed yeah. and stay out of that zone completely and you know just pray to god nobody else bombs through there during the day but you're you're with patience i really with elk especially you know being patient is so important but finding those spots and knowing like we watched elk come out of places last year i wouldn't even have thought there would be elk bedding mm -hmm. like in these rims and cliffs and i'm like oh my gosh there's elk coming out of there right now and never would i have thought there would be elk there and then you know we mark that now and know that that's that's actually a bedding area yep. and um, you know that time on the ground is really really valuable and taking your onyx with you and, and coupling with other seasons like spring bear season is a great time to scout for elk mm -hmm. yeah it's great you seem to there seems to be elk everywhere during yeah. spring bear season <laughs> like yeah. i'll go spots and i'm like i did i've elk hunted this before and i haven't seen this many elk um but yeah and too to your point if you've been there and if you've got waypoints and reference points if you do hear a bugle a bedded bugle now all of a sudden you're like ah i know where that bull exactly is. Where like i've at. been there it might and have been i know summer. how to get the wind in my favor how to get down yep. wind and, and you're like if the wind's good i know exactly where where that bull is like there's a nice little ridge that yep. benches out with some beds and then a wallow down below like 
if you know that stuff, it it's so fun because again, you'll hear bull bugle or something and be like, I got it. Yeah. Like I know I know what I'm gonna do to to stack the cards in my favor. So let's talk about some of the upcoming classes you guys have because I don't know if mm-hmm. you guys are like me. You get emails from Onyx all the time where um, like I got one from you guys. What is it for? I got it yesterday, I think. On Probably the, the hunt research tools. Yeah, the hunt yep. research tools. So I got one yesterday. It's a master class, hunt mm-hmm. research tools, <clears throat> stop dreading application season. You guys are going to have a whole, like this is this is the cool thing that Onyx does. They do, they do classes to help you be successful. And then they have, when you click on one of their links, even if it's something that doesn't interest you maybe, mm-hmm. if you pull up the, the um, the email and open it, there's upcoming master classes. You click on that link and then it'll take you right to additional classes that they're going to be having. So right now they're going to have one for um, hunting mule deer in February. They're going to have um, uh, research tools. You guys are going to application season, deep dives into wave points, mm-hmm. um, antelope. Like all of this stuff is all yep. coming up between now and March 12th. And if you guys are listening to this after March 12th, they're going to update that schedule all the time so yep. it doesn't matter but these are free classes if you're an elite member you guys can go in there and stream these classes and actually interact with the instructors that are teaching yeah i mean a lot of a lot of q and a and so like the mule deer and antelope one those are application season focused with hunt and fool again they're the experts you know all things western mule deer hunting um how many points do you have what's new in wyoming what's new in colorado what what does this season look like after you know the winter that we're about to have mm-hmm. or having right now um so all of that will get addressed there and then the cool thing about those classes is like you said it's a it's an interactive class yeah we want questions uh they'll take them on the fly um and even if folks aren't sure if they can for sure attend i would urge them to register. sign up register because we the, the day after the class we will email you uh, a link to the the class itself so although it might not be q a interactive live you can watch it on your own time and still get the great education and, and resources mm-hmm. from them. And you're going to listen to other people's questions and yeah. have them answered. So hopefully... Most of the time, they're all kind of s- yeah. very similar questions, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's a great opportunity for all of us to improve ourselves, improve our knowledge of the app, mm-hmm. impl- improve our knowledge of application season or whatever the season is at the time. Yep. They, they update this class schedule constantly. So, because I want you to check all of that out. Anything else you guys you want to touch on? No, I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Like yeah. I said, it's always good to, to catch up and, and see, see everybody during show season. And uh, I'm hoping for everybody, mostly for myself, application seasons are good this year. Yeah. I'm going to draw that sheep tag, and it's going to be it's You gonna keep be putting that sheep tag out there, yeah. Dylan. It's going to happen. I'll probably draw, yeah, one of these years. You're getting there. Well, Yogi has years. like 14 points in Nevada for sheep, so there you go. he's he's hoping that he's going to be drawn pretty soon too. <laughs> I I don't have that same prayer really, but I'm going sheep hunting next year, so um, uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm I'm buying that tag. Though. Guaranteed but I, sheep tag. I guarantee sheep tag, but I I booked it almost four years ago, and so sheep tags have increased in price exponentially since then. That's and, crazy. Um, and you know, and and a lot of these big destination hunts, you know, people want to go on using. Onyx, the application tools you have, and doing some of these, you know, lower end hunts that you have more odds of success, and then you can save money mm-hmm. to do these higher end hunts. You know, like for me, you know, I'll save for four or five years to go do a sheep hunt while I'm hunting, you know, my home state or a yep. neighboring state that's a lot more cost effective. And so, you know, these destination hunts are really not out of your reach. And you know, if you guys are wanting to do some of these yep. higher end hunts, also it's just, you know, utilizing these tools that allow us to stay in the field to keep hunting, but also maybe even save for bigger opportunities. For sure. And and the last point really that kind of sparked a thought is I hear a lot from, you know, even friends or people just that I'm surrounded with of like I wish I could go do that or I wish I could apply for these states or when's a good time to start applying like yesterday is the answer but now I mean don't don't wait to apply and yes it's scary looking at all these points and point creep and oh I'll never catch that one unit that I heard about that's really really good in Utah but like you said sometimes it's better just to get in on more frequent units and get out there in the field and that's what I've I've learned personally I mean again one point or zero point units I've had some of my best hunts on on those hunts and it really opened my eyes of like I don't need 15 points to no. go have a great trip. I can do an over-the-counter Oregon blacktail hunt, or I can go to Colorado on a zero-point unit, shoot my best mule deer ever, and, and go experience those, those things. So, um, yeah, that would be my last thought is, like, don't wait. Yeah. Just just do it now. Start now. Even build points. Once you get a few points, look at it and figure out how to use them. 
I appreciate all of you guys for tuning in for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. Thank you, Dylan from Onyx. If you guys are not elite members, go online, use code WILD20. You're going to save 20% on your new elite membership. And um, if you are looking for other great discounts, go to my website, go to PursueTheWild.com. You can stream the, ep- the episodes for Pursue the Wild. You can stream podcasts and you can click the discount tab. And you're going to find lots of discounts if you forget what the code is. Just go to that discount tab on my website and we'll take you right there. And Dylan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll see you all soon. When conditions get tough on a mountain hunt, your gear must be tougher. Making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail. Any condition, anywhere, Hornady Outfitter ammunition is designed to perform. Available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger. When you're looking for a hard-hitting, deep-penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments, look no further than Hornady Outfitter Ammunition. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.